Hello everyone. So in the previous class we have discussed about the cash pooling concept and how we are going to post the bank transfers using the cash pooling. So in today's class we are going to start a new topic which is in-house cash management. So it is also called in-house bank management as well. So it is basically used to manage the centralized treasury department so let's say we have a group of companies we have company 01 and we have another company 02 company 03 so each company have their bank bank 01 and this is also bank 01 so we are going to have another company and bank 01 so company 01 is a parent company and all the other companies are the subsidiary of the company 01 so these are the subsidiaries so when we are going to implement the in-house cash management so either have bank account for each company code what we are going to do we have one external bank account bank 01 external bank account and this is the real bank so this is the real bank account managed by the company 01 but for the for these two companies company 02 and for company 03 we are not going to create the real bank account so instead of creating a real bank account we have a virtual bank account so this will be the let's say bank 02 bank 03 so this is the pre implementation of in-house cash management scenario so after that what we are going to do we have bank 01 only so for each company code we have a one bank account externally managed by the parent company so these two company codes do not have their own bank accounts so we have only one bank account for the parent company only so we are going to create virtual bank account in SAP and this will be linked with the in-house bank in-house cash bank account we are going to create so virtual bank account in-house cash so we will have the in-house cash bank account for the subsidiaries and one real bank account for the parent company so after the implementation of in-house cash bank in-house cash management what we are going to achieve we will have a centralized treasury department and the treasury department will be centralized so we will reduce the cost reduce the cost of treasury users so these are the benefits let's say benefit number one we have reduced the cost of treasury users and we will also if these company codes are in different currencies like this company have a currency of PKR and this is in Pakistan and let's say this is in US and this company is managing USD and let's say this is in India and this is managing the currency of INR so we will also get the benefit of 
netting as well so we will have a netting concept to hedge a foreign exchange risk so we can hedge the forex risk as well so these are the benefits we have multiple types of benefits so let's say we have so we our bank relationships will become more strong because we are going to maintain a higher amount of bank balances so our bank relationships will become more strong we are getting cheaper loans and our bank relationship will become more strong as well so these are the benefits we are going to have so let's come to the scenarios which we have which we are going to pay fa face during the implementation of in-house cash management so our first scenario will be the payment of on behalf of so this is the first scenario which we have to face during the implementation of in-house cash management so what the company one will do let's say we have two companies company 02 so during the payment of the company 02 when the company 02 is going to pause the vendor payments so normally what we are going to do when we are going to post the vendor payments so our outgoing clearing account will create it and our vendor account will be debit so after the implementation of in-house cash management so this outgoing clearing account will be in-house cash in-house cash house bank outgoing clearing account so this outgoing clearing account will be posted and system will generate a IDOC and this will post it to the company 01 and in the company 01 payment request will be posted and then after that company 01 will make payment on behalf of company 02 so this is the whole concept of the payment on behalf of and after the implementation of in-house cash management we will have payment on behalf of receipt on behalf of so we will get multiple benefits of having a netting as well when our company codes are in different currencies and we will have a centralized treasury department our bank relationships will become more strong because we are going to maintain a higher amount of balances in our bank accounts we can get cheaper loan as well so these are the benefits so let's say let's check out how we are going to do this in SAP so first of all let's discuss about the payment on behalf of scenario so we are going to create first of all payment methods so we are going to have a separate payment method for the implementation of in-house cash management so let's say I am going to have in Pakistan so Pakistan is not yet configured so my country is Pakistan and I am going to have in-house cash management
so this is the payment method which we are going to have which we are going to implement for the in-house cash management and this payment method will be attached to the invoices of the vendors so let's create this I have to specify the document types as well so it is taking too much time stop this transaction and okay so I'm going to create a payment method go to FBZP go to payment methods okay let's come to 1710 so these are the payment methods already configured so let's check out I'm going to use this T come back so instead of using this create another one okay go to US and we are going to have another payment method copy this and I'm going to create H in our sketch management. So this is the payment method. I'm going to use the classic program. Enter. So we have created another payment method of in our sketch management. And now let's come back. and methods company code come to 1710 name trace company code 1710 and method is H save bank determination so we will create a one in-house cash management bank account so let's come to 1710 and here check out the bank so one separate bank account will be created come back let's first create the house bank these are the house banks already created so I'm going to use this house bank US EP01 so here we are going to assign the partner profile so partner profile will be used like here if our company 01 for we are going to create a virtual bank account for company 02 so we are going to assign the company 01 as a partner profile so IDOC will be generated and this will be posted the company 01 and payment request will be posted in the company 01 using the partner profile so one data exchange medium will be generated so let's check out partner profiles so here we are going to create the partner profile let's check out come back so we will create a partner profile as well so I am going to use this bank account for okay, this first one 
so I'm going to use this first one bank account as a now cash bank account so this will be the virtual bank so go to bank determination go to the company code bank accounts so here we have bank account ID and sub account so this is not so here we are going to assign a payment method H so let's come to H USD bank account ID let's find out So here we are going to assign the outgoing clearing account. So let's say this is outgoing payment. So this is the bank account we have created. So now we are going to assign the partner profile. So this is all for today. In the next session we are going to assign the partner profile as well so thank you for watching this video